morning everybody. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my animals today. I'm Leslie Mayer, I'm a physiotherapist. I specialize in chronic pain. Um, treating my animals today because they're both sickly animals. This is Lulu, he's the or Baloo, he's Oriental Black Siamese and he's been highly inbred which has resulted in him getting deformed legs. He's also had an operation on this leg because his growth plate had been uh, damaged and it stopped growing and the vet told me I had to either amputate, put the cat down or lengthen the leg. And so I lengthened the leg and now he's got a deformed leg that is skew and he doesn't walk very well. He's also got asthma, sinus problems, intestinal problems, all kinds of problems. And um, he actually stinks. So he's stinking because he's got a sinus infection that's permanently there. He gets gunk in his eyes and when I open the throat I can actually see that the throat is raw at the back and red and sore and that also is what stinks. So um, he gets nebulized on a regular basis um, to help control his sinuses and that and unfortunately when I stop it returns and then I've got to start it over again. So this is about day seven or eight that I've been treating him and I'm using his smell as a gauge as to when I could potentially stop and reduce it again but you've got to do it until he doesn't stink anymore and then after that you've got to do it for another three to five days so that he can fully recover. With him I'm going to be nebulizing Tom. Tom is my leopard tortoise. Now he was rescued and came to me last winter, actually it was this winter, and um, what happened was he was rescued from a man who was trying to eat him so he was busy trying to kill him with a panga and trying to break his shell open and this panga business has resulted in him damaging his spinal cord which has resulted in his back legs being a little bit lame and they don't work as well and um, because his lung is just under the shell where, where the panga was and the shell's been damaged um, his lungs sit there and the vet was saying that if the tortoise gets tipped over onto their back then they can't breathe and that's why you can't have a tortoise on his back so um, he's also the reason why I'm treating him is I noticed he was blowing bubbles out his nose and they say that if you don't treat a tortoise if he's blowing bubbles it will cause them to get a pneumonia or double pneumonia and then they can lose their balance and they can die now um, when Tom came here he was already in hibernation mode so I put him in a spot that I thought was a good spot and obviously it wasn't a good spot and soon after that I saw his nose was bubbling I don't know if his nose was bubbling before the time but um, it could either be the compromising of the, the panga hit on his back or it could be as a result of him being put in a cold space when he moved here. And that's the biggest causes, causes of um, tortoises getting um, pneumonias and, and, and snot and that is, is because they've been put in a cold environment or the temperatures drop too much and they can't heat themselves up. So I've got to treat him until his nose no longer bubbles. And because he's inside his shell all the time and he doesn't know me and he doesn't come out, I use Lulu as my gauge. So I'm hoping that by the time Lulu is better, Tom will be better, and then we can um, stop doing the treatments for them. Uh, the vet does say it has a tendency to reoccur, especially over the winter period of time. So hopefully if we can clear them totally, it will, it will be better. All right, so I'm going to start the nebulization. Um, I nebulize with a combination of saline. I've used um, bisolvent. by solvent and then a antifungal medication that the vet has prescribed and um, I put Tom in a box because he breathes slowly so um, you've got to put him in a box so that it doesn't escape and because it's in a box it's got a little hole on the side here which means the steam comes out this side and then I can nebulize Lulu at the same time. This is Paddington, go lie down. So the animals will be nebulized for about 20 minutes, which is about how long it takes for the steam to stop steaming. That's when the medication runs out. And um, with Lulu, because he's used to being nebulized, okay, he always wants to try and escape, but I can do percussions. Now, although the percussions sound quite hard, it's not painful for the animals. We also use this technique for treating babies. Um, I used to work in a hospital where we treated a lot of babies and um, we would use these percussions and that on the babies. You'd wrap the babies up in a towel so that it, it doesn't hurt on the skin when you're percussing but also um, that they can't fight you because if their arms and their legs are loose 
they have a tendency to fight and kick and carry on. But once they've gotten used to being percussed and actually know that you're not hurting them because it's not painful, they actually get used to the treatments and then um, they actually sometimes even don't go to sleep because a cat will never go to sleep here. Yeah. But babies often go to sleep and what you want to do is you want to treat all four sides of the chest. So with babies and that, I tip them upside down on a pillow so that you draining their chest like a tomato sauce bottle and then you would turn them from side to side so you treat the one side then the stomach then the other side then the back and then lastly you would um, get them to cough and you'd get them and, and you'd suck their noses clean if they're not big enough to um, blow their noses now with children you can teach them um, by the age of about one they can start blowing their nose and this is done by teaching them different animal noises and you'd say a cat says meow and a dog says woof and, a, and a, um, a buffalo says and you show them without a tissue so you close your mouth and you blow your nose out so that they can see the snot physically coming out and that's what the buffalo says and then what you do is you just add a tissue afterwards once they've seen what the buffalo says and the kids are very cute with that age and they learn all these animal noises and within a, about a week they can blow their nose and they can blow it properly if kids can't blow their noses properly, um, can't get rid of the secretions in the sinus cavities or in the chest for that matter, and then they stay sick for long. So we then have to suction the, the secretions out using a special uh, machine. I don't always have that machine available here because I don't really treat chests here. Um, I specialize more in chronic pain. But um, as you can see, all my animals are walking around here. They're all part of the treatments and they're interested in what I'm doing because I usually do play therapy with them this time of the morning as well. And um, I like to treat my animals um, early in the morning before I start working because then it's done for the day and I don't have to worry about forgetting about them. So they will, as I said, get steamed for 20 minutes and then when the steaming is done, I will put them on a shortwave machine. So shortwave is this machine to my left and um, it's got a, a deep penetration depth of about 10 centimeters. And this machine helps to make the fluid in the lungs as well as in the sinuses more viscous, which means it's more runny. So when you have a, a chronic sinus problem or for that matter, consolidation of the lung, your secretions become hard and congealed like chunky cheese. So it's, it's not very easy to get chunky cheese out your chest when you are sick. So we use a shortwave and within three days of using a shortwave on a um, congested chest or a chest that's got a consolidation, that's where it's gone hard, you can actually start getting chunks of phlegm coming out of the, the children. And um, often after a treatment of a, a physio treatment for a chest of a baby, um, the children will vomit up phlegm within about an hour after treatment and parents are always quite concerned that the child is vomiting up the phlegm but it's actually a good thing because that phlegm sitting in the stomach actually makes them quite nauseous so if we can get the phlegm out of the body it's so much better so you want the children to blow their noses you want them to cough and they should learn to cough on demand so very quickly the children there by us learn to cough and if they don't cough we force them to cough and how you we usually force them to cough there's a special little trick that we use is you gently stroke the front of their throat and then off goes a little cough but um, if you know you don't want to be too hard you don't need to to maul their throat so just a gentle rubbing over their trachea and then off they will do it's cough 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 and that's very good to help get the secretions out of the chest now although this, the nebulizing needs to be done for 20 minutes i'm not going to continue for the 20 minutes now because i want to show you what the short road looks like and um just what it does for the animals and then I will continue with the treatment when the video is done. So I place the short wave on the cat's chest. Because it's got a 10 centimeter penetration depth, it will do both um, the right and the left side of the lung, which is really convenient. And um, I will put it on for five minutes, of which half the time will be on the chest and the other half I'll move it up to the sinuses. Now, um, the 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 reason why I like shortwave is it's got very few contraindications, so that doesn't do any harm to the, to the animals or the babies. Um, the only contraindication it does have is that it shouldn't be around a pacemaker. So hopefully no babies and cats have got pacemakers. Um, and like I said, it's got a 10 centimeter penetration depth, and this helps to really make things very loose. So it's, it's like putting a hot water bottle in the chest. So apart from treating lung conditions and sinus conditions, it can also treat arthritic joints. It can treat chronic back pain, neck pain, shoulder problems, any 
any area that's sore, a nerve that's compromised, um, all kinds of things, it, it helps to just improve the blood supply to the area. And when you've got good blood supply, it brings better oxygen to the area. And when you've got good oxygen to the area, it helps to improve um, your healing ability. And the, the more oxygen you have in the area, the better you heal and the quicker you heal. So that's what we are wanting. So um, yes, Tom will also get the short wave uh, shortly. And we'll do Lulu first, and then we'll do his chest and his sinuses. And then Tom will get the short wave on the back of his shell to help her because the lungs sit just below the shell. And um, if you allow me, well, I just make him. I put the short wave in front of his face so that it can potentially clear out the the nose. Now, interestingly enough, tortoise is unable to cough. So how they would move the secretions in their chest is they would r use their back legs to rock their body from side to side so that they can move the secretions out so that it can run out their nose. Now, I mentioned before that poor old Tom doesn't have good back leg, leg function. He can still use them to a degree, but they're not very good. Now, the nice thing about the short wave, it might even help with the repair of his uh, neural tissue, depending on how badly it's been damaged. And um, it might actually improve his leg function. And if that happens, I'll need to move him away from my female tortoises. So this is how you would treat a, a, a chest infection and a sinus infection of both a cat and a tortoise. And it works the same for babies. And um, a very important to do, so if your child is sick or your animal is sick, please invest in looking after them, they need you, um, they can't help themselves, so do help the children, and um, the short wave works very well and very quickly on babies, so like I said, it's about three to five days of treatment for babies, and for the tortoises, we're already on day seven and we're going strong, they haven't cleared up yet, but Lulu is smelling less dead than he did last few days, but his shield is still up in his eye, which means that he is still quite sick. So, thank you for watching.